Hey, welcome back. It's me, Wasabi, and today we have another episode of Wasabi Has Spoken, a series of short comparison videos comparing two mice to hopefully help my fellow gamers narrow down their options. Just keep in mind that these are my thoughts, personal opinions, and experiences from using both of these mice. At the end of the day, this series is just to help gamers figure out for themselves which mouse suits them best. And today we're going to take a look at two great mice from Razer, the latest Viper V3 Pro and the iconic Dev Adder V3 Pro. The Viper V3 Pro comes in at a price of $160, released in April 2024, has a right-handed symmetrical shape and an official weight of 55 grams for the white colorway. And we have the original version of the Dev Adder V3 Pro that comes in at a price of $150, first released in August 2022, has a right-handed ergonomic shape and an official weight of 64 grams for the white colorway. The design of the new Viper V3 Pro aligns to that of the Dev Adder V3 Pro and really they look very similar to each other. But I must say that the Dev Adder V3 Pro looks a lot more appealing and interesting with the ergonomic curves. The Viper V3 Pro is the newer of the two and does feel a lot more solid with its build compared to the earlier Dev Adder V3 Pro. I got my Dev Adder just last year and I can't be sure if they've improved the build quality from more recent batches but between the two that I have on hand, the Viper feels like a more premium and solid feeling mouse. Great coating on the Viper that seems to handle sweat very well from my experience. I personally don't enjoy the coating on the Death Adder V3 Pro as it feels smooth when your hands are dry and gets very slippery when your hands get wet. Both of these mice include grip tapes which help but if you want to use the mouse without grip tapes, the Viper V3 Pro would be your best bet. Razer Optical Mouse Switches Gen 3 on both of these mice. Personally, the clicks feel much nicer with better tensioning on the Viper V3 Pro than my Death at a V3 Pro. Side buttons of the Viper are good but a little mushy towards the end. The side buttons on the Dev at a V3 Pro on the other hand I find to be very nice to use. They are large in size and have little to no post or pre-travel to them which makes them feel very instant to press. Scroll wheel on the Viper has a much better quality build. Steps are tighter with more feedback and without feeling too stiff. It also feels a lot nicer to click than the Dev at a V3 Pro scroll wheel in my opinion. Quite a noticeable difference in the weight on paper and how it feels in your hand between the two. Some gamers prefer mice with some weight to it, but if you want to experience the absolute lightest weight between these two options, the Viper would be something you should check out. Tech-wise, the Viper V3 Pro is fitted with Razer's latest sensor that goes up to 35,000 dpi and allows you to adjust your dpi with single step increments, while the Dev Adder V3 Pro sensor goes up to 30,000 dpi and does not allow for fine DPI adjustments like the Viper. But it's not something I would consider to be very important. Both mice are able to achieve a wireless pulling rate up to 8000Hz but the Viper V3 Pro comes with a hyper pulling dongle as standard while the Dev Adder V3 Pro Original Edition does not. Choosing between these two mice is pretty easy. I would just choose based on your preference for an ergonomic or symmetrical shaped mouse. If you aren't sure which you prefer, the shape of the Viper V3 Pro would be a much safer choice. It's very much Razer's take on a universal shape that provides a good amount of support Then many people have found it to be rather comfortable. It also works with a wider variety of grip style variations for different hand sizes over the Dev Adder V3 Pro. There is something about the side flares of Razer mice that feels a little awkward and uncomfortable for a number of people including myself but between the two the side flares are not as annoying on the Viper V3 Pro with its symmetrical shape and flatter sidewalls that gives you a bit more flexibility to position your fingers along the side. An ergonomic shape like what the Dev Adder has feels best when you have the right hand size for it because ergonomic shapes are usually meant to feel as natural and comfortable to hold with their curves and angle down to the right but everyone's hand size is a little different. If you have medium to large hands, it should work well with a relaxed claw grip or palm grip styles or at the very least just a palm grip. With my hand size of 17.5 by 9, I can use it with a palm grip but it's not the best feeling palm grip I've ever felt on a mouse. It's not unusable but I personally prefer a greater level of comfort with my experience using such a grip style. For Valorant, my preference leans more towards the Viper V3 Pro for me because it's a lot easier to micro adjust with its size. The Death Adder is a mouse that I strangely enjoy using for a game like Overwatch 2 over the Viper V3 Pro but I believe it's because I used it heavily mid of last year and I just sort of got 
used to it and made it work for me. On Modern Warfare 3, I prefer the Viper for the reason of its size and control over the mouse and I gotta say that the lighter weight is enjoyable for a faster paced game like this. So which has more value for money? Well, if coding and polling rates above 1000Hz is not something you find very important, then you should be able to find a Dev at a V3 Pro much cheaper these days. And that on its own is pretty great value considering the tech that you get. But if high polling rate and a good coating is what you want with your Razer mouse, then they have a version of the Dev Adder with a smooth touch coating and comes bundled together with a hyper polling wireless dongle. So choosing between the Dev Adder bundle and the new Viper V3 Pro, I feel that in a way you get more value with the Viper V3 Pro because of the new sensor and lighter weight, which is something that many gamers look for these days. So which mouse for competitive gaming? Well, you can't go wrong with either because they are both top tier performance mice and are very much used by many esports professionals today. The best all-rounder mouse that you can use comfortably for day-to-day -day work and has the performance with the latest tech in the gaming mouse would be the Viper V3 Pro for me. The Viper feels the smaller of the two and it has an accommodating shape that works with many grip styles and the coating itself provides an excellent amount of grip for gaming. But if you have a strong preference for an ergonomic shape, then it can only be the Death Adder, but I would recommend it only if you have the hand size for it because many gamers have found it to be too big. I wouldn't recommend any of these mice for small hand sizes. My hand size is 17.5 by 9 and the Viper V3 Pro, which is the smaller of the two, already feels a little too big for me. If the mouse was any larger, I would have to hold it in a way that doesn't feel perfectly natural and would be uncomfortable for long hours of use. It's always best to have a mouse size that feels good for you so you can have the most comfort and enjoy the benefits of the shape with how it was designed to be. So if you have a small hand size, I would suggest to consider mice from other brands. Overall, I prefer the Viper V3 Pro because it's more fitting for my hand size and the coating is great. But I will say that if the Death Adder V3 Pro was smaller in size with maybe the flares a little more tamed with its design, I'd pick the Death Adder any day of the week. It's a shame they don't offer different sizes with this mouse because many gamers have been wanting a smaller size with the same tech for a very long time but most have moved on to other brands because of that. I would say that if this is your first time going for a Razer mouse and you want to use a top tier Razer mouse then the Viper V3 Pro would be the safest pick of the two. If you're already using a Death Adder V3 Pro and you love how it feels then I personally would just wait for Razer to release a V4 Pro or check out other options from other brands. If you're curious to know more about either of these mice, I've done a review on both of them and it goes into more detail of what you can expect from the product itself, some things I like about them and some things I feel could be improved. But anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful in any way, please leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and I guess I'll see you in the next one.